So you ask me about uh, my preference, my choice uh, between academia and uh, industrial research. Well, the answer is very easy. It's only in academia that you are free to invent the question that you want to work uh, about. And in an, in an industrial setting, you would have to accomplish the task that a manager inflicts on you. So this is unacceptable and I prefer academia. I have to admit uh, that uh, I was not sure about the country that I would work in and this was more a, a kind of uh, chance that projected me uh, to France. Uh, at the same time I have been very much thinking about the questions that I wanted to address in my career. So the questions that I had to invent to address them then experimentally and conceptually and that part of my career has been thoroughly planned. I always chose to work on what I call a big question, so rather uh, to address the function of one single molecule in a particular setting, I wanted to elucidate a whole process. So uh, this makes it a more long-term project because when you're working on a process, uh, you cannot solve uh, the question for many years. While speaking several languages uh, is actually helping in two ways. First of all, uh, it facilitates uh, your capacity of communication with your colleagues. Second, uh, it structures your brain because you learn that uh, the signification of words is concept dependent and uh, that words mean, mean nothing. So that the data that you obtain, when you translate them into words, uh, have to be very carefully uh, transposed. Uh, and uh, you have uh, to uh, stick always to the data instead of the word wording. So speaking several languages relativizes the uh, way how you capture reality. And there's another thing about languages. Uh, if you sp are totally fluent in several languages, uh, you become able, especially when you switch from one language to another, to uh, see reality from a slightly different angle. So it makes you more flexible in your way how you handle problems, especially in biology. The first thing that is useful about being in an editorial board is uh, you get more rapid access to information and you learn to process information very quickly. Uh, and the second one, which is uh, an interesting side effect of being in editorial boards, is that it is more easy to publish in the journals uh, that you are controlling. Well, the format of papers in BBRC is uh, obviously very short. Um, uh, with four figures uh, and a limited number of words uh, and references, which makes that uh, the papers are, tend to be uh, quite preliminary in their uh, message. Uh, and of course, in this uh, uh, world of scientific uh, uh, careers in which you have to accumulate merits, uh, it is good to have published in a particular topic, for instance in BBRC, and then to go for other journals uh, uh, to obtain uh, further recognition of your work. When I was uh, starting to, uh, as a medical student, uh, uh, there were very few journals in biochemistry, and BBRC was one of the best ones, uh, uh, one of the few ones and one of the best ones in this area. So I think this is the historical reason why uh, many top papers have been published in BBRC. Well, of course, I'm proud of my citation statistics. Uh, so I, I have been cited some 60,000 times and my age factor is 124. Uh, at the same time, these are statistics uh, that uh, cannot be used to measure individual merit. Uh, they just give a very rough indication. There are two types of uh, uh, journals uh, to be very schematic. Those in which it is relatively easy to publish and those in which it is very difficult, the high impact journals. Now, a laboratory cannot afford, at least our laboratory cannot afford, 
to publish or to send all papers to the high impact factor journals because uh, the revision process that is inflicted on you when you want to publish in this kind of journal is so expensive and at the same time so redundant uh, that you have spent to spend a considerable amount of resources, man, month and financially spoken, uh, that will not lead to any discovery, just to the repetition of uh, uh, experiments that you know about already. And uh, they will hence uh, uh, reduce the production of your laboratory. On the other hand, you cannot afford um, to publish all your papers in low impact factor journals because it is bad for your reputation. So you have to find a compromise uh, to take the risk and uh, to accept the cost of uh, publishing in high impact factor journals on one hand and to move uh, uh, along very quickly and to publish in low impact factor journals with the sake of uh, uh, producing a lot of data and to uh, discover new uh, data. Well, I think it is very important to avoid uh, publishing what some people call the least publishable unit. Uh, so it is uh, not an acceptable uh, procedure to uh, pack the minimum of information in a paper to get published. What is interesting for you and for your colleagues is to get a whole set of information that is useful for the community. And at the end, it pays off to uh, publish complete papers with a lot of information because you will receive uh, citations and recognition for that particular strategy of uh, vehiculating a maximum of data, results, concepts in one single paper. Well, the peer review system is, of course, essential for a sort of quality control uh, that uh, sometimes uh, or even often ameliorates uh, the scientific content of publications. At the same time, uh, it should be avoided that the peer review system leads to an increment in the uh, an excessive increment in the time that elapses from submission to publication and in the cost of producing uh, scientific information. So I give you the example that uh, you produce uh, data that show uh, the relevance of a physiological process uh, in two different species, let us say in yeast and in Drosophila in the same paper, and then the reviewers come and say you have to produce uh, reproduce the results in a third species. Uh, it adds no value to the publication, but it makes your life difficult as a, a scientist. Well, I tell to my students when a paper is rejected that it is important to feel intensely frustrated at the edge of suicide, but only for 10 minutes. So, uh, feel your emotion, but do it quickly. Well, uh, the scientific world uh, is uh, increase, becoming increasingly competitive. Um, uh, new countries are coming in to play a decisive role in the production of science. Uh, I'm talking about the Asian countries, especially China and uh, to some degree also India, Korea, and others uh, and uh, in this context uh, we have to face uh, the what is probably not a surprise uh, that uh, new uh, countries will become scientific giants what I tell the, the students that they recruit into my laboratory when they are on the edge of deciding whether to start or not a scientific ca career uh, that there are, of course, many obstacles for uh, engaging in uh, a scientific life. And the, the most important quality that an individual requires to do uh, this kind of job is that he or she must love 
working at the bench and must love the everyday life in a laboratory. The smell of mice and the noise of refrigerators. Because uh, the scientific career is made by this kind of activity, it's not uh, uh, that uh, you only give talks or only write papers, it is the production at the basis that must amuse you and that you must enjoy so that you can engage uh, in this uh, path. Well, of course, uh, uh, as a young scientist uh, who engages uh, in his or her career needs advice, uh, uh, how to take uh, choices, to which laboratory to go, which topic to address, uh, uh, where to move, uh, uh, and this uh, is uh, one of the things where I can help uh, by a role model and by giving advice.